The anglers on the Sitgo Bassmaster Tour have been at it for three months now, striving to get ahead in tournaments through the south and the southeast. Now, though, they've hitched up and made the longest pull they've ever made, more than 2,000 miles across country for their first visit to California. The California Delta is legendary for tremendous fishing, but you can't help but think that these anglers are thinking about their chances against a man who's made himself a legend on the Delta. Robert Lee of nearby Angels Camp, California, has incredibly won all three Bass Open Division tournaments held on this water, dating back to 1997. But there were some surprises on day number one. Roger Bowler, it turns out, matched up well on day one. 27 pounds from the angler, who was a long way from his home in Slidell, Louisiana. 12 ounces. An off day for Robert Lee by his standards. He had some ground to make up if he wanted to keep his streak alive. 20 pounds on day two got Lee closer and more importantly into the top 12 to stay in contention. Roger Bowler got his 20 pounds as well to keep the lead. Right. Day number three is qualifying day. And the hometown crowd in Stockton wanted their local favorite in the finals. Robert Lee did not disappoint, bringing in a 21-pound plus stringer, the biggest of the day, to move in right behind a now struggling Roger Bowler, who did get 15 pounds, but admitted that his spot was fading fast. Robert Lee now positioned in second and ready to challenge. Well, I'm catching him slowly but surely. We'll see what happens tomorrow. You are catching him. Well, he's a good fisherman. I'm sure he can catch him, you know, but uh, I, I think I can catch him too. So it's going to be close right down to the end. We'll, we'll see what happens. Everybody's got to come out here and see what happens tomorrow. Well, now tomorrow is today. Roger Bowler with a slim lead going into the finals against Robert Lee, Jimmy Mize, Jack Wade, Joe Thomas, and Skeet Reese. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is presented by Bush. Hello and welcome to the Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail. First time ever for the Bassmaster Tour in the Golden State of California. I'm Tommy Sanders. Jerry McKinnis is on site. He'll be joining us momentarily. Just coming off a big event last time in South Carolina on the Santee Cooper Lakes. One that produced some performances that will definitely be going into the record books. And as we begin our final day action here in the California Delta, we go to Kirsten Gum to tell us more about this bass fishery. And Kirsten looking a little bit cold for an April morning. Chilly indeed, Tommy. You know, it is actually 15 degrees below the norm for this time of year out here in California. But I'll tell you what, that has not stopped our anglers from whizzing past me just a few minutes ago, headed out for the final day. You know, here in San Joaquin County, there is 800 miles of navigable waters. But chatting with the anglers this morning, they're talking like they're only going 20 minutes out. Jerry McKinnis, you have a better view from up in the sky. Tell us about it. Well, I can tell you right off the bat, it's kind of chilly up here. However, the view is awesome. And I know bass fishermen, when they start talking about their favorite lakes, they, they say Toledo Bend and Sam Rayburn and maybe Okeechobee down in Florida. Bass fishermen, you need to put this California Delta on that list as well. Well, Jerry, it looks like it's going to be a whole lot of fun. We know that, and as we also know, these waters have a tremendous amount of potential. Do you see some scoreboard changing coming up soon? Well, I tell you what, I'm not going to do much predicting today. I'm going to stay away from that. But I do have Robert Lee right below us here, and uh, I'm very anxious to talk to him about his game plan today. Robert, what's it all about here? How are you going to get started? Well, this morning I plan on looking for some big fish that have moved up to the bedding areas on the high tide. I normally don't like to fish the high tide, but the big fish have been freaking out when the tide gets too low and I can't catch them. So with the weather like today, looks like it's gonna be calm and warm. I hope they swam in overnight. I think I'm gonna have to get them early. So, uh... Well, I know you got a really be excited about this whole thing. Uh, matter of fact, you, you seem to be the man here that's gonna be able to possibly expose this whole California seen the bass fishermen all across the country. Yeah, this is a dream come true to show the, the United States the, uh, the fishery of the 
California Delta. For me to be involved in it, to be in fourth or second place now, and have a chance to win it, represent the West, is totally awesome. I'm excited to go out and fish and, and uh, see what I can do. Okay, well, we'll let you go. Be safe today. Good luck to you. And uh, Tommy, these guys don't have very far to go. Most of them are going from 15 to 20 minutes away. And me and we'll be fishing by the time, well, we'll be fishing when we come back from break. Eight hours of fishing, almost ready to get started here. Can Roger Bowler hang on? Will Robert Lee accomplish an unprecedented four feet? We'll start to find out when we return. I think I can catch it. We'll see. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Sitco, by Bush, and by Skeeter. Skeet Reese of Auburn, California picked up his first tour win in our first event this year on the Harris Chain in Central Florida. The day he won that event, he started in the last spot, the field of six, and that's where he's starting today on the Delta. There we go. Where's number one? Talking about a preacher man. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Look, somebody tried to, look what somebody had him on. A little damn crappie hook. Look at that. Somebody, somebody hooked him on that stupid little hook. Why are they smoking? I wonder why they lost him. I'm glad they lost him, because he's in my boat now. <laughs> All right, Skeet Reese with some used goods, but those count. He's on the board, in fact, moves up the board on this final day of our Sitco Bassmaster Tour event on the California Delta, of course, where the San Joaquin and the Sacramento Rivers come together. Lots of other rivers from the coast and the Sierras. Half of California draining through this delta into the San Francisco Bay. Hundreds and hundreds, literally, of miles of fishable water. So, Jerry McKinnis, it's extra important this time that you place our anglers. Show us where our six finalists are fishing today. Yeah, and... Tommy, this is not an official uh, uh, fact, but I would like to see another county anywhere in the United States that has more bass fishing water available. Man, it, it's incredible. I'm not kidding you. Yeah, let me place these guys for you. Uh, we'll start with the number six guy, Joe Thomas, and he's gone up 14 mile slough past Big Slough, and he's gonna start in White Slough. Now, Skeet Reese may be the farthest of our six anglers, the farthest away from the takeoff here. Skeet may be just off the San Joaquin River in a place called Fisherman's Cut. Nice little cut right here. Jack Wade's in Discovery Bay. That's kind of a complicated one to get to. Frank's track gets lots of fishing traffic, and that's where Jimmy Mize is at. Robert Lee, now get this, Tommy, Robert Lee, who really knows the Delta is fishing in a place called, get this now, Disappointment Bay. <laughs> I would not fish the finals of this tournament in Disappointment no. Bay, would you? We, we'll see, I guess. And Roger Bowler, a very slim lead, is just above Tyler Marina in Isle Mouth Slough. All right, thank you so much, Jerry. These guys, of course, we're going out to Jimmy Mize, our first look at him for the day. Jimmy Mize currently in third place, six pounds behind our leader, Roger Bowler, and Jimmy Mize's job for the day, fish slower. That's something my wife finally convinced me of a few years ago. I'm one running gun fisherman. She said, you ain't gonna catch him if you're riding. And she, she finds a good area, she, she'll get the most out of it which the last couple of years I've slowed down and started doing that. And it's amazing what you can catch out of a spot if you work it hard enough. I want you to have a look at our scoreboard. We always try to keep it in the lower left for you there. We show the leader on top his pounds. The folks who are pursuing, we show in terms of the pounds that they are behind. And you are our scoreboard watcher, aren't you, Tommy? And today. We're, yeah. <laughs> we're going to keep you busy. These guys are throwing plastics primarily. Thank you, Jimmy Lord. Mize right here is throwing a, a good start with brush you. hog, throws it with a slip sinker, gets it down there in the bottom real fast. A lot of the other guys are throwing Cinco's uh, weightlessly where it drifts to the bottom. And, well, Tommy, while I was there, I met Mike Dugers with the San Joaquin I Sheriff Department. Him. Kind of showed me around there a little bit. This gave week. me some farming information. This is the Thank asparagus you, capital of the world. You didn't know that, did you? The asparagus capital of the world. I didn't know you'd been talking to the Sheriff's Department either. Why is that? This water's a little bit clearer than I've been fishing. That, huh? The Sheriff's Department's a little scary, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I've been fishing, uh, you know, most of the water I've been fishing has 
Oh, six inches to a foot of visibility. So the jigs work a little bit better in dirty water, but this clear water, I don't know. It might be the only place we have to throw a dang Cinco. And homie don't have the patience to fish a Cinco right now. I want something I can get it out there quick, get it to the bottom quick, let him eat it quick. Our leader, Roger Bowler, having definitely his best year ever. Matter of fact, he's second right now in the Bush Angler of the Year points. The tide's out, the sun's out, the whole front of that log is nothing but a huge bed in there. Roger Bowler trying to maintain his lead, hoping he can land that fish. Ah, and he's one of those ice. Cinco fishermen. Boy, he fishes a Cinco a lot. Every time I've seen him, he's been fishing it's a Cinco. It's a start, not a big one. Skeet said earlier that it takes a lot of patience to fish that bait. That's because you cast it out and you just mm. let it slowly drift to the bottom. And speaking mm. of Skeet Reese, mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, these fish are they're, they're spawning. They're difficult to fool with when they're spawning. We are going to lose some fish. Couldn't get my hand on the... Uh the handle to start reeling. Well, as we say, Robert Lee has never won outside of California, never won off these waters in the Delta, but boy, he owns this place. And when Roger Bowler caught his last catch, he gained about a pound on Lee. Robert's rigging up a zipper worm, and I want you to look at the crowd behind him. That's about the mm -hmm. largest group of boats following an angler I think I've ever seen, and he's using a very large hook, a one odd or two odd. Ready Looks like go. about a 3 8 ounce slip sinker. Got him, big one! Get in here, son. Yeah. Well, that's the male on on that spot. I, it was a, it's a bed fish. I seen him yesterday. I didn't see him today, but well, for three days, Robert Lee has been oh. chasing Roger Bowler. He's finally caught him. Now let's see if he can hang on to that lead. And as he was motoring out this morning, he mentioned uh, new oh, fish Liza. swimming in. What he was referring to there uh, was fish during the night coming up on those banks board. to to get ready to spawn, and maybe he is running that's into good, that. Pretty good start there. It's a three and a half pound fish anyway. Well, the tide is high, and that fish was probably in about okay. three feet of water over by those yeah. tulies or the reeds. Well, you know, it didn't bite. I flipped in there three or four times, and all of a sudden I picked up, and it was heavy, and I go, I got to him. A lead change right off the bat. Hey, if those folks back at the dock in Stockton knew that Robert Lee had taken over the lead, it'd start a little bit of a rumble right now. It's still close, still tight. Lots of fishing to come. We'll check with Jack Wade when we get back. Sitco Bassmaster Tournament trail this week on the California Delta. Jack Wade having his best season in a long time. Second top 10 finish of the year here today on the Delta. Jack fishing in Discovery Bay. Our leader right now is Robert Lee. Just took the lead over Roger Bowler, who has run this tournament for the past three days pretty much. But Jack Wade back in a place with a lot of boat docks. Well, guess what caught my eye in these dead end sloughs where these fish were? These these yellow flowers on the bank, those fish seem to be relating to them. Uh, two or three different areas where I've caught fish and quality fish, they'd be, it'd always be pitching toward them at high tide. I go along pitching and flinging that bait back in Well, I guess you could call it the flower pattern for Jack Wade here. And, you know, a lot of the pro anglers will tell you the flowers are supported by the kind of soil. It's sandy and so forth. That's the kind of soil that, that fish like to spawn in. So Jack's pattern may be a pretty sound one here. Right now from Discovery Bay, we're going over to Disappointment Slough. And our leader, Robert Lee, Jerry McKinnis, I'm sure, has a lot of questions for him. Robert, the first thing I have to ask you is something that has been uh, bothering me all night long. This yeah. has to be one of the most important days of your life in your fishing career, and you started it in a place called Disappointment Bay. <laughs> <laughs> that that takes a lot of nerve, doesn't it? Yeah, it's kind of kind of ironic, but uh, you know, it's, it's a good slough. It's got a lot of cover, a lot of a lot of ditches and channels that the fish like, and you know, it's got all sorts of cover, and it's a big slough with deep water, and it just holds a lot of fish. Well, one thing I really want to get into you with here is is how, what you're doing, how you're how you're going about it. I, I know you explained that to us really in detail uh, yesterday evening, and I'd like to hear it again. Let, let the folks know out there exactly what's going on. But well, what you got in, in a, a lot of the bigger sloughs in the Delta, 
is you got a main channel out there and a main channel over here. And uh, these islands, some of the islands will have ditches running through them, seven or eight feet of water meandering through here. And the fish will, the fish will move in on them ditches and lay up on the, and they kind of break up. They'll move in on the ditches and they'll break up on a shelf and, and lay there to feed and spawn. And uh, that's what I targeted the last two days. The first day I was trying to do a pre-spawn pattern. And I didn't do that well. I got 19 pounds, but I struggled hard. Yesterday I decided to go for it. I come into here, I haven't been in here on a higher tide. The bigger females like to move up on the flats on a higher tide so they have some water on top of them. And when it's too low, they'll move out and suspend. So I came in here on a high tide and just kind of blind flipping the weeds wherever. I kind of visualized what the, the weeds and stuff had looked like when I um, was here on low tide and just started flipping around and um, caught some nice fish. And that's the same thing what I've done today, but I'm... Well, what's really been your lure of choice? Uh, what have you caught most of those bigger fish on? Well, I've caught most of them on a, on a zipper in oxblood, red flake. And, uh, but the two biggest fish I've caught, both of them have came on uh, um, a new tube. It's a big tube, about, well, it's five, about five inches, about big around as your finger. And um, it's watermelon, red flake, and it's like a two-tone color. It's real natural. And uh, I've caught both of the, the biggest fish I've caught have been on that. Joe Thomas, you definitely call him a journeyman. Been out here almost 20 years fishing with the Bass Masters. Four trips to the Classic, but no wins. He's looking for one here. He's been solid all week, but Joe Thomas is along with Skeet Reese and Jack Wade down there in the bottom half, you might say, of our scoreboard there. A score for Joe Thomas, but these are the guys who are fishing for fourth. The other three are the ones contending for first place. But if I wouldn't have had that one yesterday about this size, I wouldn't be fishing today. So. <laughs> Joe's absolutely right. Every ounce counts, especially when they get to handing out the paychecks. Look at the crowd for and Robert Lee. Tommy, let me sort this out. We got our buddy Roger Bowler, <laughs> who is taking the lead back. A small fish, but he's back in the lead. Well, they're slugging it out right now. We haven't got this thing sorted out yet because Robert Lee... Now, wait, I don't know if he's going to... He did get it in. Oh, my gosh. What a landing. And Lee is going to take over the lead again with that fish. How about that? <sighs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh! Oh, boy, Robert Lee can hardly contain himself, but I got a nomination for the ugliest landing of the year. This is it right here. Boy, you said it. Uh, uh, Roger's fish wasn't as hard to land, That's but it was a lot smaller. Fish. Yeah, the stakes were higher here. Every time I went to grab him, he'd shake his head the other way. Well, all's well in the end. They say it's not how, it's how many. He's got that, that one in the boat, a good way. fish, too. And take a look at Skeet Reese now. He's apparently caught a good fish to move ahead of Jack Wade. I have to laugh. That fish wet his face <laughs> down, didn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. He's real careful about Pulls keeping his boat off of that bank, not to disturb the next fish that he hopes to catch. <laughs> Going to get to finally show his fish to the spectators there. There's no doubt among anyone here in the Delta who is the greatest student of bass fishing in this part of the world. What people don't realize about out west is there's just as many fishermen as back east, but the fishing's so diversified. You have the ocean, you have steelhead, salmon, trout, stripers, everybody fishing. Back east, if you fish sportsmanlike, you fish for bass, or you catch catfish or crappie. I like to do what I do and work, but to just give it up and move to Alabama from California and just, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Plane tickets are only $270, so I'll get a plane ticket, you know? Well, we're watching Skeet Reese now, and a couple of months ago I was talking to him, and he, he he was telling me that Lee was unbeatable out there because he knows the tides so oh, well. So well. far he was right, but Skeet's doing pretty well himself, by God. Yeah. Or at least he was. Hey, hey, yeah. I'm a little bastard, man. <laughs> That was good. Another two pounder. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's only two. But... Well, our leaders got the momentum now. Did you check out that scoreboard? Joe Thomas with a good catch to jump over Ski Reese. Get out of the cellar. We are scoreboard watching today, folks. Don't go away.
Welcome back. It's the Sitco Bassmaster Tour. First trip ever for the tour to California. We are on the California Delta where the San Joaquin and the Sacramento Rivers come together. A vast and well-respected fishery for a number of reasons. This is the man right here, Roger Bowler of Slidell, Louisiana, who has led through the first three days of this tournament. He's done quite well. He's now boating his third fish of the day, but Roger Bowler now has a new position, that of second place. And you don't want to be in second place because that means he surrendered the lead to Robert Lee just down the road from Angels Camp, California. Robert Lee, you see, has won the first three events held by BASS on these waters. And as we take a look at our scoreboard, we see that all of our competitors in the top six, with the exception of Jimmy Mize, have swapped positions. But Jimmy Mize at 61 pounds is certainly not out of contention at this point. Yesterday on the third day of competition, Jim Saul won the amateur prize, a three-day total of 36 pounds and 11 ounces. And our other story from the amateur side, maybe not quite as uplifting. Jim Valadares of West Covina, California, was fishing on day one with pro Kelly Jordan of Texas. Had a good day. They'd made it all the way back to the dock. And Kirsten Gum. This is where the story kind of starts to get painful, right? Yeah, that's right. Kelly and Jim made it back to the weigh-in site on day one down here in downtown Stockton. They both had their limit, but when Jim stepped out of the boat, he literally stepped out of the boat, oh no, right into the water. Now, the killer thing about this is not that Jim just got soaked from head to toe, but his bag of fish, his two largest fish, a four-pounder and a three-pounder, also took a swim back into the delta, leaving Jim not only drenched, unhappy, but two fish shy of a limit. Oh boy, hard to know exactly how much those two big ones would have weighed, but likely enough to have gotten him into the top 12 and given him a shot at the championship. Super painful, but you have to hand it to Kelly Jordan. Of course, reaching out not for Jim, but for the bag of fish. We all know where the important priorities lie out there on the tour. Right now, let's check back in with a guy who has taken over the lead, Robert Lee. And Jerry, how's he looking now? Boy, he is looking good, Tommy. You know, we've mentioned a couple of times this is our first trip to California. And then in the next breath, we say that Robert's won the last three events here. Those wins were at open events. And this is Arr! the first tour event in California. Mama, it's a 10. Oh, my God. It's a freaking gorilla. Oh my. Come here, big mama. Open your mouth for me. I got you. Ah! Oh, now that's what I like. Oh my God. <laughs> Baby. <sighs> I love you. Oh my God. Can you fit? I better put it in this other side. Tell me, I have just one question for you. Oh How's that race for <laughs> second place going? Well, fortunately, it's close because Robert <laughs> Lee continues to be outstanding. Total awe, uh, shock. <sighs> well, that could go down as one of the most dramatic catches ever in Bassmaster's history. Oh my gosh. It's the same bait that I caught my big one on yesterday. <sighs> gosh. It's unbelievable. I gotta regroup. I missed that fish yesterday. It's trying to spawn there. I kept throwing in there and I kept cut the mail, you know? I kept throwing in there and kept throwing in there and kept throwing in there. All of a sudden my line's all. You gotta keep your eyes open. I guess I spotted that. Well, I missed him yesterday morning, or one of those two. And I looked in there when the tide was low, and I seen a gorilla laying in there. I thought it was a seven or eight, but the water's kind of stained. You can't tell. It's more like nine or ten, or nine anyway. Oh, I, I got a hook on my gets it now. 
you want to do that for me? It's a, it's a nine pounder easy. It's bigger than the one I had yesterday, and the one I had yesterday was almost nine. Robert Lee catching the big fish. That'll be a scene that none of us will ever forget from this tournament. Of course, missing him. That's what Skeet Reese is not going to forget about from this if tournament. If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, that's three pretty good fish Skeet has lost. And boy, what a difference that would have made in, in his standings. And uh, Joe Thomas is fishing in the same area as Robert Lee is fishing in, believe yes, it or not. And, although that's pretty good yes, fish there. They're not quite the caliber of what uh, living in that life, uh, Robert's catching. <laughs> Robert has just got so much momentum going. He's got the momentum. There's so many big fish in here. It's an incredible fishery. We haven't talked before. enough about it, but we know that Skeet Reese has some opinions. The head biologist for uh, this area, Fish and Game, his name is Dennis Lee. and. You know, we've had, you know, people ask, well, can the California Delta produce world record fish? And sometime back, um, you know, a lot of us said, no way can the Delta produce a world record fish. Well, from what I understand, Dennis Lee has changed his mind now. Um, he definitely sees the potential in the Delta to producing a world record class fish. And I can see it too. We've got, um, so much cover here, so much forage. The forage in this place is unreal. I mean, they've got crawfish by the billions, um, bluegill, crappie, catfish, plus we got all the striper, steelhead, and salmon runs that come up and down the river, so they got all the smolts they get the feed on. Uh, so the food source here is just unlimited. Well. Not much we can add to the last six or eight minutes, but coming up, Alton Jones is going to join us, help us add to this great story here in the California Delta. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Sitco Bassmaster Tour. First time ever for the tour in California on the Delta here. Of course, there have been some BASS open events here. As a matter of fact, this is the place where the largest fish ever caught in BASS competition was caught 14 pounds and nine ounces. We've just seen this place strengthen its reputation a little bit more. That huge fish we just saw Robert Lee catch a few moments ago. So it's no wonder that all the anglers who've made it thus far in the season came out here with some high expectations. And as Kirsten Gum joins us, Kirsten, a lot of people thought coming into this tournament that it would be a cakewalk for the West Coast guys. But in days one and two, that's not the way it turned out. Boy, it sure hasn't, Tommy. You know, they call this the Golden State, and there are many reasons why, but Louisiana native Roger Buller sure found out there's gold in these waters. He took the lead in the first round with 27 pounds, 9 ounces. Jack Wade brought in the big bass of the first day, a 9-pound, 15-ounce largemouth bass. On day two, well, Roger Bowler returned to his gold mine of a canal here in the San Joaquin Delta, catching another big bag. Jimmy Mize jumped 20 places to the second spot on day two. In fourth place on day two, the hometown favorite, Robert Lee. Now, after day two, he was 10 pounds behind the leader, but Remember, he has won three BASS events here on the Delta. He has a great track record here. It's nice to come to a place and not have to look at a map the whole time you're practicing. You know, I didn't even have to use a map. 2001 Classic Champion Kevin Van Dam jumped into sixth place. He told me, man, he's starting to like this West Coast fishing thing. And I guess, Kirsten, it just proves again those fish sit down there. They don't know whether the lure is coming from an East Coast guy or a West Coast guy. They sure do not. You know, we have anglers from all over the place in the top six. Yeah, let's take a look at that top six again. Roger Bowler led the way. He's from Louisiana, followed by Robert Lee of California. There's Jimmy Mize of Arkansas, Jack Wade, Tennessee, Joe Thomas, Ohio, and then our winner of the first event of the year, Skeet Reese, another Californian. Right now, as we continue to watch this exciting fishing, we're going to be joined by the guy who's currently in fourth place on our Bush Angler of the Year. Year points. Alton Jones is with Jerry. Yeah, Tommy, I want to talk to Alton Jones here a little bit about this uh, layout. And you know what? What occurs to me is, is you guys not only have to find fish, you have to figure out how not to get lost out here. 
Well, th this place is, is a very confusing area. Um, but, you know, we fish big places all over the country. The Louisiana Delta is another one. Yeah. And this one actually is not near as confusing as the Louisiana Delta. The, the channels are very well marked. And the difference between a place like this and, and Louisiana, for example, Louisiana, there's pockets of fish because there, there's places where saltwater intrudes in and places where it doesn't. Uh -huh. But this area is all fresh water, and it's all loaded with bass. Well, is it all loaded with bass, or do you have to go through some areas that are, are void of any fish and you have to figure that out. Are, are there really fish everywhere? There, in this delta, from what I've seen, there are literally bass everywhere you stop. The key is, now you have to figure out how to catch them, how they're positioned, how the, how the tide is affecting them, how they're relating to the grass and the cover that's there. But uh, once you figure that out, you can stop anywhere and, and get a bite. Well, so much is, uh, it, so much talk about the about the tide, up and down, up and down, and and I realize that does play a big part of, of your strategy and just how you go about your business all day long. The one thing that I think is is a little bit out of whack is everyone saying, well, you know, this guy's going to be better because he knows more about the about the tides. This guy has never fished the tides. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I think a, ba a good bass fisherman is a good bass fisherman, and he's going to figure it out just like that. Well, I think that's exactly right. And, you know, what you'll notice on these fish, you will see that there is a tide when the bite turns on. But even when the tide's wrong, you can still get a bite, and you still may get a big bite. And if you don't know the area thoroughly, which most of the pros have never been here right. before. Are, are um, you included in I'm that? I'm included in that group. Okay. Uh, we don't have the luxury of being able to do what they call running the tide and jump from spot to spot and follow a particular tide that we like. So, you know, a safe bet is to get around an area that has a lot of fish in it and that you know has the right quality that you're looking for and stay put. And, and I don't mean making one cast, but just get in an area and fish thoroughly and you'll be there when the tide is right. Well, you say this is your first time uh, in, 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 on this water. When you pulled out of here the first day and got away from the, the town and started looking at the real delta, nice. what was the first thing you started doing? Well, um, actually, you know, I, I, I flew over the delta before we started. Mm -hmm. And in a place that's this big like that and you have different water I mean, colors and weed beds and things, uh, that can always be a, a big help. And I had located and circled on my map several spots that from the air just looked key. The first place I went to had 30 bites. Oh, my goodness. And, I, you know, I'd heard this delta was great, but I didn't know it was that good. I mean, it was just phenomenal. I had my son with me. By 9 o'clock in the morning, I had to cut his hook off and because he was catching too many three- and four-pounders, and he was just leading around, Dad, I got another one. He didn't have a hook on. He was just shaking them off, you know, and we just had a ball. You know, days like that when my son gets to practice with me, you know, those are days he's going to look back on yeah, that's 30 right. years from now. That's so right. I remember when me, when me and my dad, the first time we went to the Delta, you know, and it, it was... Do you fish to win? Yeah, you have to. You, there's, there's. And, and, well, let's back up here, and let's explain that. You're having a great... You're really having a great year. But we haven't seen you on television because you hasn't you haven't in. broke over into that top six area, and that's a that's a tough thing to do. Sure. Do you sometimes get complacent and start enjoying, or not enjoying? That ain't the right word, but being satisfied with uh, 23rd place and 18th place, or never, never. And um, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I, my philosophy is not to worry about points and, and making the classic and that sort of thing. Those those things take care of take themselves. Care of they happen. But what you really want to do for yourself and for your sponsors is to win tournaments. And, you, you know, with 175 guys, you can't win every one. But if you don't fish to win, if you're not fishing for the right quality of fish that lives there, if you're just fishing to points, you're seldom ever going to win. Okay, then get real specific with me. What would you do to try to win? What what? Would you do differently to try to win than somebody that was just trying to have a steady day? Well, for an example, um, on the Delta, we'll just use that since we're here, to, you really need four pounders to play here. All right. If you're catching two pounders or three pounders, you're not going to win. So I, I look at a spot and I say, uh, is there a potential for me to catch a four pounder here? All right. Uh, what that's going to mean is one, it's going to have some deeper water leading up to it. It's going to have some grass around, uh, and then I'm going to throw very aggressive big fish baits. I'm going to throw a, a, a big yum dinger, which is a which is a soft jerk bait. I'm going to throw a lot of jigs, a lot of big spinner baits, um, a lot of uh, rattling spots, and things that I know have a history of catching large fish. I want something that, that a 10 pounder might eat. I'm not going to be out there throwing a finesse worm trying to catch 12 inches. I'm going to I'm going to try to go with the averages of, of hopefully getting that big bite sometime during the day. And, and you're actually yeah, sacrificing baby. a lot of bites. You just want one bite. Yeah, we only need five. You know. 
know, five it, bites a day. Th this is such a humbling sport because you think we're bass pros and all we need is five bites a day. How hard can it be? But I tell you what, some some days these these bass, these little bitty old brains, outsmart us. <laughs> and and you know what? You also along those same lines, you see you come in with five really great fish. They weigh. 19 pounds, and, and the, the person watching that way and thinking, my gosh, Alton must have caught them all day long, when in fact, you maybe didn't have that great a day, you maybe had five bites. Well, that's right, and, and uh, the fishing and successfully is really a matter of very short windows of opportunity. A lot of times when you have that big bag, it happens in 10 minutes, and you've got to be there, all your equipment's got to be in top shape, and when it starts happening, you better be ready because you may it may happen in five, literally in five casts, and you may not get any other opportunities for big fish the rest of the day. Alan Tommy Sanders here. I wanted to ask you, you guys are talking a lot about the tide. We've got some guys out there who are not familiar with that situation. Can they get into trouble? Is it dangerous? Well, Tommy, you're right. As these tides fall, there are some places that uh, you can run at high tides that you need to be really careful of in low tides. But by and large, uh, there's so much grass here in the shallow water that when the tide falls, you can see the grass. And as long as you run the, the clean looking water, uh, between the grass patches, you're fairly safe, and, and at low tide you can see a lot of that that dangerous debris becomes exposed. All right, thanks very much, Alton Jones. And boy, while we visited with him, lots of action, lots of fish catching. Take a look at the scoreboard, some movement up and down, except in that first place position. Robert Lee really hammering that one down as we get closer to the end. Don't go away. Welcome back to our Sitco Bassmaster Tour event on the California Delta as we enter what you could call our very last period of fishing here. Time is slipping away. While you are away, a little bit of change on that leaderboard there, including Skeet Reese, who's now moved out of last place and could, if he sets it on fire, contend for second place. And Skeet, while we got you, wanted to ask you, what has been your best technique all week long? Pretty much flipping, flipping, and flipping. <laughs> That's about all I ever do on the Delta here. Well, Skeet, if you don't mind, show us your bait, and if you could, walk us through a few flips with it there. I'm just fishing a green pumpkin tube. It's a Terminator snapback green pumpkin tube, 5 16 ounce sinker. Um, and I just pitch them. What I'm doing is, if you look up here, if we can get the uh, cameraman to, to look up in the grass here, you'll see a grass line, then there's some clearings behind the grass, and then you've got the toolies. And what these fish do is they get right behind that grass line and little openings, and that's where they're spawning. So that's really what I'm trying to key in on is just flipping it in those little holes back in there. And sometimes they're tight up underneath some of those lay downs so you can see all the tulies are dead and blowing down up there. Um, that can be ideal stuff to get underneath that. Uh, fish feel protected even though they're in shallow water. Uh, but any of those little clear uh, holes up in the shallow waters where that's, that's the stuff I'm keying in on right there. Back over to Jimmy Mize, who's also been one of our movers in the past few minutes. Oh, Matter yeah. of fact, having passed Roger Bowler to take over second place. And Jimmy is not fishing up against the bank like everybody else is. He's kind of fishing his pattern from the old Arkansas River right. days that Thank he's you, uh, so familiar with. He's back off the bank quite a little bit, pitching a brush hole. A couple more like it. I bet you will. Jimmy from Arkansas, where he holds down a full-time job. But I tell you what, Jimmy loves life on the tour as well. It suits his it's family, too. Side. It's really great to get to see the whole United States, get to travel, and I've been lucky having my daughter going with me and my wife went with me through the years, my son. You know, the whole family's got to see a place they never got to see we haven't been a bass fish. I like it out here. You know, I've always wanted to come out here all through the years. I so said, I hope we go to California sometime. <laughs> I guess it's kind of bad to say, but I've always heard, you know, you guys can't come out there and catch fish in California, and it's kind of a deal like the bass is a bass. You ought to be able to catch them anywhere. Jimmy Mize and his crew have to be the fast tournament fishingest family in America. Boy, you are right. And here's one for you, Tommy. What lady has the highest one-day weight? Now, this is on the amateur side of any BSS event ever. Now, who's that? That would be uh, Jimmy's daughter, Melinda. And I'm guess who the record she broke? I, I bet I can guess, is it? It's going to be Lucy, Lucy his wife. Yeah. I'll be darned. The Mises from Ben Lomond, Arkansas, right Get there on the shores of, there. of Lake Millwood. It's got to be this cloud cover while they're biting, man. Because they darn sure didn't bite in here yesterday. Joe Thomas definitely winning the battle of what we call the bottom half of the scoreboard, Jerry. I should say, and Joe's an old friend. He has a, has a TV show on the on the Outdoor Channel. And Tommy, this oh, is baby, a big fish. Biting. Did you see how that thing ran off the bank? He's behind the boat there. This oh, could grass, really man. make a change for Joe. Oh, no, oh, that is. Oh. 
That is a fish that could have helped him to his biggest payday ever. Yeah, right I think there. so. Skeet Reese disease. I think. Mm, ooh. <laughs> think he caught that from Skeet. Boy, that's tough. That fish was pulling the boat around. He just came off. Sometimes that just happens. The fish just come off. And you know, the sad part is people would much rather like watch you lose a big one on TV than they would watch you catch it. Well, I'd like to be able to deny that, but unfortunately, Joe Thomas is so well, he's exactly right. Just kept from one of my kids from going to college, probably. <laughs> Ah, heck. Hey, Tommy, I mentioned earlier that uh, Robert Lee and Joe Thomas were fishing in the same area. As, as I look and compare right now, I can see that uh, Robert is fishing on banks hey, that have baby. those tulies or the reeds, and Joe's oh, yeah. banks were bare. Come on, stay on. He's... Yeah! Gosh! I got him. I got him. He ain't that big, but my God! <laughs> Ah, yes, big old fat one too. <laughs> Man, where am I? Meanwhile, over in Discovery Bay, the southernmost part of the system here, Jack Wade just keeps on laboring, but not doing a whole lot of good yet. And this is the first guy that we've actually right seen sight fishing. You can see a bass just over to the right of your screen, and he. Bunk. <laughs> oh man, that's great. I hate to see Thank old Jack Lord. on the bottom because he's a Finally. he's a great angler. He's had a great week. Once you get him charged up, you're gonna catch him eventually. You know, I, I'm happy with what I caught and how I performed in this tournament. So whatever happens, happens. I I did my best. We'll find out a way in. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. A big weigh-in coming up. Beautiful spot there in Stockton, California. A huge crowd, and you can bet your last money. They'll be pulling for this hometown favorite. They want to know if he can four-peat this time. We'll be right back. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Yamaha. By Sitco. And by Bush. What a beautiful facility here in Stockton, California. Great crowd assembled for the weigh-in. Send me from Tennessee, Mr. Jack Wade. The crowd is ready to go in the first boat to pull in, that of Tennessee volunteer Jack Wade. He's been at this game for a long, long time. His second top 10 finish of the year here on the Delta. He didn't quite have enough today. He finishes in sixth place. Skeet Reese battled a stomach bug during the first few days of this tournament, if the truth be known, but he's feeling obviously better now. He's a fishing machine, but also a dancing machine if the conditions are just right. The music and the crowd helping him to forget a few disappointments out there on the water. Today, he comes in fifth place. Go Cincinnati, Ohio. Next angler's Joe Thomas. Come on, Joe. Joe Thomas, he was steady out there today, but he just had too much ground to make up on the leader. 14 pounds, 11 ounces for four. Fourth place. Roger Bowler's dream came true, and it was a beautiful thing for about three days. The reality of fewer and fewer fish caught up with him on this final day. He takes third place. Please welcome Jimmy Mize. Come on. Jimmy Mize, another journeyman who got his licks in this week in the California Delta. He hung on, caught his 16 pounds, captured second place with four good days of fishing. Wait, six. 16 pounds and five ounces. All right, everyone but one has weighed in. And of course, the crowd there in Stockton hasn't seen what you and I have seen, that incredible performance by Robert Lee. So let's watch as the inevitable unfolds. You guys ready for this? Give it up for Robert Lee! Robert Lee, hello. Hi. How you doing? I'm okay. Take your time. All right. <laughs> you having fun? Yeah, I'm, I'm more nervous now than I was when I was fishing. I bet. I mean, look at the people out here, my gosh. <laughs> I'm ready if you're ready. I'm ready. Let's go, Robert Lee. Look at this. That, that, by the way, won't do it. Okay, I got one. 
Okay, he's got more, he says. Oh my. He's going back for another one here. Watch this. Oh my. Oh. Robert, the weight that you need is right here. It's getting real, real close. We're within, we're probably within ounces. Well, I got one more, but he's not very big. So. Well, let's see him. I think we're within six ounces, maybe. by Robert Lee, the unprecedented four feet. And as we look at the top 10 four-day totals of all time on the Cinco Bassmaster Tour, there's Robert Lee's name right there in fourth place. Would have gone higher, except for our last event on the Sanchez Cooper Lakes in South Carolina, where five of our top six made it into the all-time top 10. A quick look at our Bush Angler of the Year statistics before we close it out. There's Bud Pruitt back on top again, and right behind him, Roger Bowler and the Rookie Angler of the Year standings. Mark Kyle, one of the West Coast guys, has taken over first place. And speaking of the West Coast, we'll be out there again next time on the Sitco Bassmaster Tour. Clear Lake, which has every promise of being like the Delta, a super big fish area. I hope to see you then. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPNOutdoors.com.